Hello, hello. Friends, this is Diane from Bogo Stamper. Let's see if we're making... Um, okay. There we are. Let me see. Hello, hello. Oh, you can hear me too. Lovely. Oh, how exciting. So, it's March 25th, which means we're making some Christmas cards and it's really a disaster in my craft room right now because not only in addition to Christmas cards I have things ready for my 15 minute cards on a Friday for tomorrow and I'm still working on Easter cards I have to finish up my family Easter cards here so I have stuff just about everywhere all over <clears throat> All right, now that I know everything is um, running okay on here, let's get started. So, yesterday was the release of the demonstrator's preview to the new catalog, and I'm pretty happy that the stamp set that I was going to use today is going to be held over into the new catalog. So those gorgeous animals of nature will still be available to you. And in today's cards, I'm going to pull in another stamp set that has some elk on it. And I think last month when we talked about this, I did explain that this stamp set does not have... Uh, greetings or sentiments. So you'll have to have other stamps handy to um, put whatever you want to on there, which makes it kind of nice because you don't have to use these just for Christmas. You can make a great birthday card for your favorite guy. Luckily for me, I have about a million Christmas stamps. So I grabbed my Merry Christmas to all because it has some really pretty fonts and a lot of messages on there. And I'll use that with a couple of these. The first card that I'm going to show you is my little Moonlight Fox card. And this was the easiest card to do today and ended up being my favorite card that I did. Although that's not what he was going to start out being, but I'm really happy with it. So I started with, all of my cards today have a crumb cake base and a Knight of Navy mat. I did have other colors picked out to use as mats, but for some reason the Knight of Navy just looked the prettiest with all of them, so that's okay. We're keeping these cards more in line with nature, and I'll show you when I get to the one. I was trying not to make them too glitzy glitzy, but make them more natural. When we get the new catalogs, I think one of the first things I go to <clears throat> is usually the, um, the nature scenes. I have a lot of, a lot of my stamp sets have little critters on them and stuff, and that just seems to be my, my favorite type of a stamp. So for the flux, we're going to do my favorite technique here with some ink blending using the blending brushes. And I faded this out to make it more of a night scene. So I'm going to use some Misty Moonlight and then blend in a little Highland Heather and then some Night of Navy on the outside edges to make it look a little bit darker. I'm going to stamp my little fox first. And I'll stamp him in soft suede. And this white cardstock is going to get trimmed down a little bit. So I'm going to not put him too close to the edge. And you can use, remember, whatever 
stamps you have. I'm going to use a blending brush, a blender pen, I'm sorry, a blender pen. And I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, these have glycerin in them. And so when you use a blender pen and just kind of go over and the design teams who make these stamps are amazing. They already have lines in here where shading would be. So when you use a blender pen and go over it, the glycerin kind of blends the ink out a little bit. And you don't have to worry so much about getting all that detail because the lines that are there will be a more shaded area on our animals. And then the areas where there aren't too many lines are going to look kind of like a highlighted area. You don't want to go over it too many times with the blender pen because it will pull up the paper. I'm going to leave his little muzzle area white and the tip of his tail white. And that should do it. I'm not really trying to make this a detailed picture. When we use our stamp and blends, um, we tend to get a little bit more involved with those than we can use um, the smaller tips around their eyes and stuff. I'm giving more the hint of the fox's color. I have a little two inch circle cut out of acetate that I'm going to put behind I'm going to put on top of the fox so that it looks like our moonlight is behind him. I'm just putting a little bit of tacky sticky tape on there, but I don't want it to stick stick. So I'm take some of that off of there and then decide where, how far you want the moon to be surrounding our fox. I'm going to start off with the lightest, the Misty Moonlight. Starting off of the acetate circle, I'm just going to start blending some of the ink outward. Keep in mind that um, there's usually more ink on your paper than what it looks like. So even though it doesn't look like you have much there, when I take everything off, you're going to be able to see that there is. I also want to have that blue coming down a little bit here because he is sitting in some snow, and I don't want it to look like he's floating in the air. So I'll just put a little bit of light blue down there. <clears throat> and actually what I'm going to do, I have um, a little mask that I cut out of a piece of paper. And it's just some little curvy dippity doos. And if I go over that... <clears throat> going to make some little hillsides. And then even better, he won't look like he's just sitting there. I can turn this over and make a little bit more of a snow mound. And we're going to add a little bit of um, Dazzling Diamond which is a Stampin' Up! glitter product that is now all over my, my craft table. So I think every Easter card I do is going to have sparkle on it now. So now I'll use some of the Highland Heather and blend it into that blue that is behind our fox. And because this one is going to be <clears throat> a night scene, I'm going to try to get this several layers on her heavy. I'm just going to keep going over and over it. And I suppose I could have used Gorgeous Grape, which is a darker, or is that what I'm using? No, I'm using Highland Heather. Gorgeous Grape is darker, but I didn't really want it to get, I am using Heather, too purple purple. I'm going to blend that blue back down into here and 
I wanted it to look like part of the sky. Number two, that when you're using blending brushes and layering the ink on your paper as the ink saturates into the paper and dries, it's going to smooth out and you won't have those little splotchy colors that appear when you're first putting them on. Okay. I'll go in from the outside edge now and add some navy and start darkening this up into a nice sky. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I was cleaning in the bathroom earlier and I think I just about asphyxiated myself with my bleach cleaner. So, lesson learned there, don't use that before I'm gonna do a live because I lose my voice anyways and that just really didn't help anything. And then of course, right before <clears throat> my video started here. My neighbor decided to start his tractor and his chainsaw and his leaf blower. So I closed all the windows and hopefully you won't hear a lot of background noise. If you do, I'm sorry. I like the way that blended into the purple. Now I'll just get it a little darker on the edges. And then I'll close up some of my ink so that I don't put my hands into it. Because we know I can do that. And when I take off my little mask, there is my cloth with a moonlit background. I don't know what that little spot is. It might be from the glue. And there's my paper towel because I don't want to get ink all over it. Hmm. It was so pretty white. And if there's ink on my little mask, it will go better. Okay. For my reading on here, I decided that white embossing would probably show up the best. But I need to cut this down first so that it's going to fit onto my, my blue mat. And I've been finding that just using my stitched rectangle frame, I'm able to kind of highlight whatever part of my picture I like the best. So I want my box to be a little bit on the lower right and leave room for my greeting. So it's kind of nice that I can frame the area that I want. And then I'll just run this through my die cut and emboss machine. So I apologize, the table's gonna shake all over while I do this, but it's a necessary evil. Another little piece of blue, make sure this doesn't wiggle around. Hope everybody is enjoying the nice weather. Finally, even though uh, winter wasn't that bad, still is nice to have it warm enough to open up the windows and get fresh air in. I'm just going to keep this guy handy because I'll cut out the other ones as well. Hey, Bonnie, how are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. Hope everything's good. These little stitched rectangles are sharp. Nicked myself a few times with those babies. Okay, so this is how we're going to look. I'm going to get my greeting on here. 
am going to use a little bit of my embossing buddy because I have a lot of ink on my paper and I want my embossing powder to stick. So I'm going to do that in white and so wishes for a beautiful Christmas. I have my Versamark ink, which is a sticky ink, clear. I don't think it's this one. I think it's the other one I'm going to use. It's a little bit crooked, so. Let this one set there for a minute. Got it. And we're going to sprinkle some embossing powder. Cover up the verse mark so nothing sticks to it. Okay. It's a little crooked. I'll have to live with it. Okay, put that back into the container. even stuck on there with all the ink. And then I'm going to use my heat gun and melt that embossing powder. So let me um, get this going and warm it up and then I will show you how the font changes. It's going to be a little bit noisy. So using the heat gun on the white powder as it melts, and you can see that it just makes a really pretty shiny greeting on there. I can now add this to my, my navy mat just with some tape runner. You can um, use some dimensionals on here if you'd like. I wanted this one to be a little bit flat because I'm going to add some rhinestones as little twinkling stars. Okay. And oh, hit the camera, sorry about that. I will add a little bit of liquid glue on some of the snow mounds. Kind of following along where the, the design is. And then we can add some of those little dazzling diamonds. And believe it or not, and I don't know if this is available anywhere. I'm sure there's other glitter, and I would recommend using um, the eco friendly glitter now that they have. It was my first time using this, and I don't even think that Stampin' Up! carries it anymore. But I had it, and I wanted to make some sparkling snow. So, I don't think I had it for my Christmas card last year. Maybe that was, I don't remember. And we can add all our glue mat to the Crum Cake card base. With a little bit of liquid glue. Combo glue is pretty strong, so you don't need a whole lot of it. Center it up on the card base. And I'm going to add some rhinestone stars. I have 
like them. And I thought they looked a little bit pretty anyways, like my flame stars up there. And there's our first Christmas card today. So not too hard. Nice to do with the um, Nature's Beauty stamp set. I was working on inserts right before we started today, so I think I'll I will add. Um, I think this one had a pretty branch, a little bow branch. I think I'm just going to add a nice little white bow branch beside my inside greeting, and then glue those to the insides. Set them aside. I'm going to change. Which one are we doing next? Oh, I guess I did put um, I did put the glitter stuff on that one too. So my next card that I was going to show you is also using Nature's Beauty. I have the deer, and Nature's Beauty doesn't have a die set, but I did uh, fussy cut some of these out. And then I cheated and I stamped a whole bunch and I put them through my scan and cut so that I would have extras to do more cards today. So that um, took about four minutes to cut all those out on the machine versus me doing each one by hand. And so I'm going to do the same thing with this guy. I'm going to use my blender pen and just go over the ink areas. And I cut these out. Um, was it yesterday? Uh, maybe, maybe it was yesterday. So you can see that the blender pen doesn't have to be on the wet ink, because this is certainly not wet. It has been sitting here all night. Again, I'm just following the direction of the lines that were on the image from the stamp. And her little face I am going to go over lightly. I'm going to try to go around her eyes so that they're a little bit lighter. And I wanted to show on this card how you can use, and I'm not doing anything to the base because that's where we're going to add the, um, we're going to add some more of the dazzling diamonds in the snow. I wanted to show you on this card how if you have some pattern paper or designer paper that has a pretty scene in the background, you can use that as part of your, your scene for your card. You don't have to then go ahead and and stamp a hundred trees or mountains or a river or whatever. If you have some design paper that already has that, you can use it to your benefit. So I've cut out a piece of our paper from, this was Feels Like Frost designer paper. And this had some really pretty designs in it and the backs of these were actually foiled. So when I got these, I I originally got this paper for the foiled background. Sis, that's enough. She hears the crackers. But I decided too that I did like the, um, the background for my animals. So I need to trim this down just a little bit to fit on my mat. I think I did this one at four, at 
five and a quarter maybe. Let's see how much of a border that leaves me. I think I need to change my blade back a little worse looking. Um, a few more than that because I mean, that's what my blue mat is. So let's go three and three quarters. that or UPS is here because I have a I have a stampin' up order coming today. Oh that reminds me I did send out an email to my customers and I haven't had time to update my website yet. Last chance products the listing was published yesterday and I sent that out to my current customers as soon as it was available to me. So if there's something that you were looking at and thinking about getting, uh, you might want to check your list there. And then I'm just going to add this panel to the blue. Trying to keep an even border around. And then again onto the crumb cake. I'm, I'm going to pull off on that in case I screw something up. <coughs> Lord knows I could do that. So the other tip I was going to share with you. My Merry. For my Merry Christmas. I wanted it to also have a little bit of dimension, but I don't want to put foam dimensionals behind it and make it stand up too, too far, make it too thick. So what I did was I cut my Mary out three times with my die, and I'm going to stack them. So this is going to give it a little bit of the, maybe the thickness, uh, not quite a chipboard, but a little heavier, a little bit more substantial than just a piece of cardstock. And it's just going to make it look a little nicer since we're going to put the deer on dimensionals. So in order to do this, I just added tiny dots of glue. It doesn't have to cover the entire area. It's going gonna, it's gonna to stick not fall apart. It's all good. So remember, you're making <clears throat> your cards the way you like them. So I'm hopefully just giving you some tips and ideas that you can use in your card making. So now that things are starting to open back up a little bit too, I'm really hoping that we can start doing some live workshops together again. And I don't know what I'm going to do then about uh, my videos, maybe getting new one. I'm just finally starting to get my cameras all set up and stuff. I hate to give all that up now. It took me long enough. I still don't have them set all the way to be able to um, straighten up, to be able to broadcast to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So and that's what I was aiming for. All right, one more. Um, you can make these as thick as you want to. I'm making mine uh, three sheets thick. This actually is a very popular trick that a lot of card makers use. Come on. My legs are pretty full. I'm afraid to squeeze the bottle too much because I'll end up with glue all over everything and this stuff's pretty sticky. And then before I add this to my card, I want to stamp 
Christmas on there so that so that this die cut doesn't get in the way of my um, acrylic block my stamping. So that on here. Come on. And then if you have another part of your card that you can go on to and work, you can just take a block and set it on there and let that glue dry. Okay, but I really don't because I want that for a minute. Let me get my Christmas. And I think what I did with Christmas was I used the soft suede ink, but I stamped off once to make it a little lighter than the soft suede, but a little darker than the crumb cake. Kind of an in-between color. I'm going to check that here. Yes. So I need my Mary just to figure out where Christmas is going to go on here. So Mary's going to go here. My little deer will go here. And so my Christmas has to go right in this area. So I tap my stamp into the ink. And I'm going to stamp off one time. And then with room pressure, just hold the stamp onto the card for a couple seconds to let the ink adhere. Get my little cleaning pad here and wipe that off. I can add some Mary sentiment. So for those of you who are new with Boho Stamper, I offer um, tutorials and demos Monday mornings at 10 o'clock on Facebook. Hello Monday. We have been working on Easter cards the last couple of weeks. Ah, look at that. I don't know. Uh, let me see. This is this is gonna be Palm Sunday, so I still have Easter cards, like I said, to finish for my family. I don't know if we'll we'll do Easter cards Monday or if we're gonna start on to Mother's Day cards. There's a long time for Mother's Day cards. Might do just a couple more Easter ones. Maybe there's some folks out there like me that are still doing their own personal cards. Okay, add a Mary. And where my little deer go? Here it is. And for the deer, I'm just going to use some of the mini dimensionals. Oh, the end piece. Let's see if it works. The end pieces on your dimensional sheets are. Sticky too, so when you get to the end of your sheet, don't throw them away. Cut those ends off and use them too. I think I'm going to cut one of these to put behind his ears.
I mean, most of us are, I guess, I guess this is more she, huh? This is a yellow. We're gonna say it is. And then just take the loose papers off of the back. No going on this. Um, Still didn't come off. Okay. Add my little dough. And then we're going to add a little bit of that dazzling diamonds in the snow on this card as well. Now I considered adding. Um, ribbon or you know what i guess i did uh, make this a little bit brown too so that it didn't stand out quite so much i did consider adding some ribbon or bow or whatever and then i i thought that because i'm trying to keep it more kind of nature oriented some of the ribbon especially christmas glittery ribbon and stuff might not have fit in with my plan there. So, I didn't. Oh, I know why it was different. I used, um, on my first one, on my practice card, I used what is called uh, glossy accents. And glossy accents, <clears throat> when they dry, they dry with a little bit of dimension. I hadn't used my glossy accents for a while, so when I went to poke the hole the, down in the top of my bottle, my little thing slipped and it went into the side of the bottle instead of the top, and now my glossy accents come out in big blobs, so I either have to find out how to get that new bottle or be really careful. <clears throat> okay, now we can add a beautiful little dough to the card base, again just with a little bit of glue on the back. Trying to make sure you get the edges and the corners if anything, because once those start to lift up, if you don't have them adhered good, it just throws your whole panel off your card. And I'm just going to set this on here again for a minute while I clean some of this glitter up. And we have one more. So there's our little dough Christmas card. That's two down. And then our third one, <coughs> our third one, which was supposed to be the easiest card that I was going to show you first, ended up giving me the most trouble. Isn't that the way it goes? You know, the, like I said, the one that I hadn't really thought about much, that box, ended up being my favorite. So I was going to use this elk, or moose, I think it's an elk, moose have bigger antlers, I believe. And um, I didn't want it to be so much a nighttime scene, like our fox card was, but I wanted it to be kind of a wintry evening, you know, have a wintry sky appearance. I didn't want to put too much gray in there and introduce another color. And I started this one as well when I got done with it. I added some of the, the dazzling diamonds. And then I changed my mind and I, um, I don't know if you can see them, I white heat embossed snowflakes. 
because in our Nature's Beauty set there is a snowflake. There are little teeny tiny dots. And I think I like that better. And I was able then to add some twine and get my bow on there like I wanted to without making it be too glittery and fancy. I was looking for um, linen thread. I know I have like six spools of and I couldn't find it, but I did have some of that. Let me let that go. Oh my goodness, I hope I didn't put it away because I have other ones. I did, I actually like them on there. So I had some of this twine and I just used this today for my ribbon on my mousse card. But my mousse. When I stamp my mousse, and I'm, we're going to use blending brushes to give it a little bit of color in the background, I had to mask my mousse off so that we didn't turn him blue. And every time I tried to detail cut out in between the antlers, I chopped antlers off. So the poor guy was not having antlers. So I decided to leave um, those center pieces in. And then just take my blending brush and go over them a little bit and pray that I didn't get too much blue in the antlers. Let me get a <clears throat> paper here because we're going to blend. So, Mr. Moose, there we go. Again, I did the stamping in softly. And not putting it too close to the edge because I know I'm going to trim this down once I have all my blending done. Did you go chase away whoever was down there? Hmm? Good girl. Yeah, good girl. And then using my blender brush. And I'm using a brown. And I did his antlers and everything very lightly. Again, just to give the illusion that he's all painted in. And I'm following the lines of the stamp. I was able to just give him some color. See, our other deer has to be a doe because I think this is a god. This is. So we have to give equal time, right? She is belly slightly. a long time to get used to using this blender pen and then when we started using our um, alcohol markers more this kind of got put by the wayside but I really do like how it just spreads that ink around just enough for you And then I did the same thing for my moose card. I used that acetate circle. And I'm not going to put the moon directly behind him. We're going to keep it kind of up in the corner because when I make the pine tree, we're going to have that pine tree coming in front of the moon. <coughs> Excuse me. So to keep this one a little bit lighter, where's my little mask? These are my moose masks. They're just the same image that I just stamped with, but they're cut out. And then I can lay it over top so that I don't cover him in completely with blue. And because I'm not making this one a nighttime scene, 
I'm just using the Misty Moonlight. And I'm just going to do the background sky on this one a little lighter. Too much on the moose. Elk. On the moose again. Elk. And then I can use this and, and try to go over the antler area a little bit. And it's so slight that it really doesn't show up on his antlers. So you're good. And then we can keep on blending. I'm going to get some purple in there because there is some purple in the evening sky. I'm just coming off of that circle area and I'm going to blend the purple down into this misty moonlight. I'm leaving the blue out for a minute because we're going to make some snowy hills down there for the elk to be standing on so he's not floating in the air. And then just a little bit more of the blue to blend that in. I love these blending brushes. They're my favorite thing. I'm so glad that Stampin' Up! started selling them as well. I had gotten them from, well, a couple different companies actually. So when they came out with them, I was probably one of the first ones to jump on the bandwagon there. I like them a lot. Okay, now my little hill scene or hill mask. I put the purple away before I make purple snow. going to go along my mask paper and make a little bit of a hill there. And I think for this one, I'll turn it over and do another one. Got them on there. Some of this will get cut off. And then, oh, I guess I don't need it too much on the bottom because it's going to get trimmed. Circle off of here. Pretty, pretty. I'm happy with that. And then um, we needed some shaded spruce to make our tree. There's my little branch. Up off. There it is. This branch. Well, actually, this elk and this branch come from Nature Sing. This is just another one of the Nature Stamps. This is older and, I'm sure, completely unavailable, unless you can find it in one of those off-site um, places to shop. So, like I said, I like my Nature Stamps. I'm not going to toss them. So, for my... I started out at the top, stamping off once, and working my way down, making my tree branches come a little further out, and then I have my, my elk over here a little further than I did on my other cards, so I think I'm going to hold my mask back on top of them while I do this, so then I'm going to put a branch in his head. And I'm stamping off to get the lighter branches in the background. And then we'll go back and add some darker ones. Some full strength. 
to fill in the areas. Remember, some of that's going to get trimmed off. Okay. And then I want in my sentiment, which I, I'm going to do that after I trim it so that I can get it in the center of my card seam. I like to clean the ink off of my stamps as I go along. I don't have too much of a mess. Okay, so I'm going to stamp that in there and I'll need my snow. No stamp. Okay, so let's trim this guy down. And again, I can pick my area that I want. I'm trying to think of where I have to put my reading. That's an awful lot of the tree if I do that. So it's right about there, I guess. And get my die cut machine. using stamp it ups large emboss and die cutting machine I have baby boss down under the table but this rectangle die is too wide to use in my little baby one so we had to bring out the big boss I'm going to do two tricks here with embossing powder. Remember, we just brushed on a whole bunch of ink here, so I'm just going to use my fancy static tool. In my case, I'm using an embossing buddy and going over the top of that ink so that my Versamark sticky ink. Oh yeah, so now we're going to do the Air, the Air Force maneuvers over the house. Maybe noon's not a great time, huh? There goes two. I think we should have one more. Unless they're only running two today. Okay. Now I have my sentiment that says, May the spirit of the season bring joy to the world and peace to every heart. I'm going to stamp this in my Night of Navy ink directly onto my little seam. I don't want all that ink on the edge. I need that to transfer my card. So let's just do this one again. I think I tapped in my ink too hard. Oh no, I know, I changed ink pads. Okay. The other one was a little bit lighter, so I got out the my darker navy ink pad. It's the same night of navy, but it was re-inked. Now while this ink is still wet, I'm going to take some clear embossing powder and put it over top. This is just a little something extra you can do on your cards. It's not necessary at all, but I wanted to just show what it does to your sentiment. I always say sentiment like it's cinnamon. I should say sentiment when I'm reading. Put this back in. Okay, 
Oh, and then we're going to do white snowflakes when we're done with I'm going to use the heat gun again and go over the words, and you can see then what it does. See the difference that it made to the words? It just gave it a little bit of shine. I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any moss and powder hanging around there. And then I need my snowflakes and Versamark ink. And the one lesson I learned off of the other one is to go around my reading there and try not to stamp over top of it. I did take a little um, paintbrush and cleaned it off, but I could have avoided <coughs> getting snowflakes over top of my reading a little bit better. And I want to turn the turn my stamp so that I'm not making a uniform pattern going down the page. And I'm going to stamp directly over my elk and on top of the tree because snow would fall on top of everything. Right. Trying to not over stamp too much. It's kind of hard to see with clear ink. Now I'll use the white embossing powder and sprinkle over all of my horse mark. And then I'm going to heat it again. So I apologize in advance for the noise. stuff is so fun. It's just so much safer to put it away as soon as you're done with it rather than spilling it all over the place and then uh, having a mess to clean up. And if I knew where those little tweezers went, right there in front of me, I could try to not burn my fingers. I was heating the back of this a little bit because when the paper starts to curl, you can kind of get it back into place by um, heating up the back of the paper. So we can put that now onto our blue mat. And then I'm going to, let me see, did I wrap my ribbon around the blue and I didn't. Trying to decide if I want to put this around my scene with the mat or without it. I guess we'll just go the way I had been doing it. So I'm going to use some of my, my twine and I'm just going to wrap some of this around 
underneath my sentiment, my breeding. And I like to make mine crisscross. And then I'm going to turn it upside down to tie because that's how I get my bows to be straighter. I'm not a great bow tire. I'm going to start to get a little low on this, and I'm going to do it in front of I like that stuff. Okay. I'm sure we'll find something else to use. Turn that a little bit more. And then, because that twine is a little bit thicker, I'm going to put um, my dimensionals on the back before I adhere this to my Knight of Navy mat so that I can, I'm still trying to get it to crisscross. Better. And to keep that where I have it because that's the way I like it, I'm going to just put a it's a tear tape on the back so that it doesn't move. And remember, this is two sided tape, so when I take the backing off, it'll be sticky. And that will just help my picture stick to the blue mat. So if you're free on Monday at 10 o'clock, join me for Hello Monday. Um, I also do my 15-minute cards on a Friday on YouTube. And if you would be so kind, if you are inclined and you liked my video, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you liked and share these so that Boho Stamper will come up a little more often when people are searching for ideas. Just helps to get my my name out there a little bit more. And I didn't fold my card base here. <clears throat> and I am so happy that you spent some of your day with me. Very kind. I know there's always a lot to do and everybody's busy, so I appreciate every every person who um, jumps on with me very much. And so there's our Mr. Elk card. So I gave you three ideas for Christmas cards. I hope that inspired you to make sure he's stuck on there. Um, to go out and make some of your cards. So we had the one I did with the glitter, and then the one I decided to do with snowflakes. This one's a little darker. Oh. <clears throat> Our dough and our nighttime fox. So thanks again for joining me today. It was nice to have you and please tune in again. Come and watch what we're going to make next. Have a great weekend coming up you guys and enjoy all the nice weather. Thanks.